Hi everyone. Uh, as promised, this is part two of this two-part series on more detailed uh, site design modeling uh, to support our uh, class project for Larch 315 and 817. Uh, this one's going to be a little more show and tell than straight demo. Uh, I wanted this is a more complete version of the model I started in the last tutorial, and I just want to go through and kind of cover all the pieces that I put together, show you how they ended up <coughs> um, being put down on the site, talk a little bit about uh, adding plants and materials. Uh, also, how to use some of the uh, V-Ray fur for making grass or meadows, and then touch on uh, the lob work plants and the use of scatter. So again, a lot of this I've covered before in my other tutorials, but I'm just going to put it in this context. So we've got the entire site here. Uh, if I zoom in, this is my original 2D version that we talked about, and you can see here, particularly if I turn the textures off, that now I've got this separated into all these pieces. So it's the kind of community garden entry paving area, there's the building platform, decking for the library. So anything that's going to become a structure, the pool, <laughs> the deck, patio, that's all been turned into a group. We have a ramp over here that's grouped together. Anything that's just getting draped onto the surface, like this pathway here, uh, is just doesn't need to be grouped and it's just left to be a, a surface that we can put down there. So now you can see I've taken that entire drawing, all those uh, parts and pieces that uh, Devin had sketched on here, and I've just turned them into geometry that connects to the outside edges of the site. And then, as I mentioned, if I zoom in down here a little bit more, uh, let's come back down here to see the site model. So this is a 3D uh, version of it. You can see where I did that grading. Uh, the pathway fits in there. My intersection's a little nicer. Um, dropped a treehouse in there from 3D Warehouse. You can see I've included now the, the walkway, which is still here as a group, the ramp. Uh, and you can see I've just kind of bent that, sloped that ramp and as it goes back and forth along the landform until it matches up down here at the bottom. I also try to make use as much as possible as uh, 3D Warehouse components, as I mentioned, if they fit. If you need to do custom designs, you can modify those. Now again, here, this is kind of sticking up above the pavement, <clears throat> so I would have to pull this down a little bit or step it uh, to make it match the slope of the roadway. Uh, and I could also use the artisan tools to pinch this edge to crease this edge. It's actually a command uh, in artisan called crease selection. And if you come in here and crease, if you select that shape at the, and you crease the boundary edges and vertices, you have to do that in two steps, it will keep these edges from moving. And that way you can regrade, you could slope, bring this down to match, and then you could slope this up and adjust that landform as I demonstrated in the first video. Also come back in here. Remember I had this in the first one, added some boulders in there. Uh, another thing that kind of helps make this work uh, uh, look a little better if you have this kind of waterfall even if we add the boulders in you can see here I've actually rounded that off that's an additional plug-in if I open this up uh, it's just this round corner plug-in and you simply select the edge you want uh, can we click on this this will set the uh, offset I adjusted it to uh, three quarters of a foot and then you click and now it just rounds that off so when you see that in the rendering it looks a lot better Okay, so that's simple plug-in, works pretty well to uh, do that. Uh, <clears throat> if you wanted to do that to other edges, you can, uh, but again, just have to decide how much time you want to take if it's actually going to show up or be that noticeable. And uh, uh, maybe in another video, there's another way in V-Ray to add uh, a, a, another image map to this that kind of creates that rounded edge and if you go into Lumion you can actually use a material setting to create the rounded edges not this big but uh, for things like the edges of the walls and the steps and things like that again I haven't come in here and added plants or regraded this to match and of course we need to add things like railings and all that but uh, you can see how each of these is its own separate group dropped down and adjusted to fit the landform so as you're doing this uh, another thing that I've, I've looked at when I did this originally, when I dropped this down and extruded it, I kind of, uh, this wall was really low. In fact, I'll show you some examples of some of the images. So here's a, here's a V-Ray rendering from this model early on before I added the water texture and things like, <clears throat> you know, the pushing the water down. So I get a little offset there. You can see this is still flush with the edge. Um, 
I in the other demonstration, I graded this up a little bit so the pathway would intersect. So, you know, in your design drawing in here, you don't really know there's, you know, is there a wall? There's got to be a wall here, but how high is that wall? Is it block off your view? Do you see over it into this space? If you're trying to create a more intimate seating area there, then maybe, um, maybe this doesn't really work. I mean, you can put other plantings out there. So I went into the model and actually took, made a version of this where I pulled the wall up. And now you can see that in this rendering that uh, I added some other plants in there, pulled this wall up, and I can show you what that looks like from inside, the actual view from the library itself. There's that wall that sits up there. There's a water feature here and a, a water wall, some furniture that starts giving you a, a context. Now these plants ended up being, uh, you can see that there actually is another piece of landform in here. So I wanted to show you how to do that. This is really a kind of quick method and you don't see it in here right now. But uh, once I put, pulled that wall up, if you wanted to create more of a sloping landform to keep the water draining away from it, to be able to put plants up there. But what I did was just started by creating a, uh, a simple outline here and I've got it grouped together uh, in there and it just, I offset lines on the wall and then angle this down and I'd use the tools on surface to draw a line along the bottom here. Once I do that, I can use this soap, uh, soap skin bubble plugin, which is free and it will generate a landform. So if I turn this layer off, put landform additions, you can see that uh, if I turn the hidden geometry on, it just use that outline and create a mesh. And I can manipulate this with Artisan and using that crease edges and vertices a method. I could keep this the same in plateau or terrace this out a little bit. I just kind of left it there. I can draw this as far out as I want. As long as it's a closed loop of lines of edges, uh, that soap bubble will make a surface out of it, which you can then continue to, to manipulate with uh, Artisan if you choose to. Now, the nice thing about this is even though there's a line there, um, once it renders in V-Ray, you don't see that. It just disappears and that all blends together, as you can see from this uh, image here in Photoshop. So that gives you another way if you don't want to, if it's difficult to adjust it with Artisan, uh, you can just go in there and draw the lines that you need and create kind of a landform patch to fit in there and just blend it in with the existing surface. Okay, uh, another thing that I did, uh, once you start putting this in, getting everything in here, you can see that I've uh, changed the, the surfaces here. But what you'll notice over here, this is particularly more complicated area, is that each of these is grouped together. Each of these, now this one isn't because I haven't actually used that for anything. This one is here. And what I've used that for, in this case, I use it to put woodland plants in. So if I come up here to my layers and I turn on woodland trees, you can see I have a bunch of these lob work trees uh, placed in here. And these aren't just placed manually. If I right click, you can see that it's actually a scatter group. So I have got these trees placed. Uh, I placed them in the model first and then added them in here. And then uh, in this case, I'm allowing them to generate and I'm not using render only. They're simple proxies and they, they look pretty good. But this way I can have them, instead of placing them manually, I can actually adjust them whether they're pointing up or along the normal landform so you get that slight tilt. Uh, I can cause them to have a slight variation in scale and rotation, uh, which just makes them look a lot more natural. And I have other um, scatter groups in here, which I'll talk about in a minute. We'll get to from the render list. Okay, so that's where that comes from. I've just added those in. Anything, uh, you, you choose a group as a host and you choose a mixture of plants. Again, you place them in the model somewhere and then in scatter, you actually say, okay, I want this group of plants to be mixed in and it randomly uh, blends them together. Uh, and again, that's the kind of thing that once you get into here, this is what those trees render like. So they're very simple proxies that allow SketchUp to work very efficiently, but once they render, you get all the detail. And this, this image actually, I stopped it before it was completely finished rendering, so it still has a little grain in it, but uh, it gives you a very high level of detail. Now this view out here and one from the deck, you can see that in this case, part of Devin's uh, design was to have a meadow out here. 
And meadows are not very easy to create uh, just because they have a lot of randomness to them and a lot of uh, mixture. And I'm still kind of working through a, a method, but I think this one works pretty well and you put a little effort into it. And this is a combination of V-Ray fur and using scatter to add in some of the wildflowers. And I'll, I'll show you that, how that was created, but it creates a nice soft edge. And you can see my water, I just pulled this down. Uh, that's the pond I had to regrade in there. And you can see the pathway around there. Um, I have to decide how to treat that edge either by adding some uh, material to that. And probably was thinking I'll add boulders and some kind of rough uh, kind of stream bed surface along that that would cover up that edge. But let's take a look at that scatter group. So you can see here, it's kind of looks like a golf course or something. But what I've got is these, um, what I've got is these groups themselves. Uh, and if I turn the guides on, I think I can select these. If I turn the guides on, you can see these, actually it's kind of inside the group. If I select that, go into V-Ray, you can see that it's got V-Ray fur under the object tab. Uh, and this is simply you make a group and then you come up here on your V-Ray tools and you use add fur to selection. Okay, that's how you create this initial um, V-Ray fur object. And then you can go in the parameters because uh, as I'll show you, this area here, uh, I modified again. I think Devin had the idea this was all going to be meadow, which also kind of blocks your view of the stream and the creek. And also since there was supposed to be like exercise or yoga classes in here, I thought, okay, maybe this would work better as a lawn area with meadow around the perimeter. So again, as you get down there and render it and look at it, you can make those kind of decisions and uh, decide how you really want to approach that in terms of the planting design. So this grass down here, which I haven't selected, is shorter. This is more that meadow grass. And if you look at the basic parameters here, uh, this is really just figure this out by trial and error. But uh, I have the length set to 30, um, the thickness 09. I think that's kind of the default. Um, the variance settings, I have the length variance set up above the default, 0.85. So it gives you some of that natural variation. And uh, in this case, I don't have a material selected for it. So what that means, the nice thing about V-Ray Fur is I applied um, the V-Ray grass material to the surface. When you apply fur to that surface, the fur picks up the color of the base material unless you override it with this setting over here under material. And I'll show you a case where I did that. But in this case, that's what this initial setting is, this lighter green. That's all, it's just picking up the colors from that base material, which is the same as you see up here without any grass or fur applied to it. Uh, and then those patches of the lighter tannish color, those are these patches that you see here. And I'll, I'll take a look at one of those settings so you can see how that works. But basically you just, uh, you apply that fur object to the group and then you come in here and make some of these adjustments. So again, the higher this is, the taller the grass is. And you can kind of by intuition figure out we've got direction, length, thickness, gravity, you know, bend direction map, which I don't apply, curl. Uh, you can adjust level of detail <clears throat> and assign a material to it. And of course, this is the count area. For something like lawn, I think when I select that one, you'll see this is up four by like five because you want the lawn very dense. For a meadow, you don't really want it quite that dense. It looks like a, you know, a field of wheat or something that's totally, uh, completely compacted together. So you have to play around with this to get the look that you want. Um, and that's how that works. And now if I come out here and select one of these objects and open it up, let's see if I can get that fur material to select. There we go. So that's V-Ray fur number 11. Now this one, you can see that's up uh, at 0.5. That length is 40. I made it a little bit longer, so it stands up a little bit. Adjusted the thickness down to 0.07, gravity to minus three. Uh, and down here, I chose material. Now, this is a little deceptive. I, I picked, um, this was a SketchUp color that happened to be in there. It's called dark khaki. I wanted a tan, but actually realized when I applied that it was too dark. So I just selected that color, clicked on this and made it more of a light yellowish color. And uh, then it's, oh, so it still says it's dark khaki, but it's actually a light color. So I could have made a custom color and assigned it. I just picked one that was already in the model and modified it to suit my purposes. So again, for that, um, I made it a little taller, changed this density, changed the color, and now it, uh, 
it gives you this look. So that's what gives you these kind of uh, rifts of different color grasses. And you could make as many of those as you want. And I drew those simply by um, using the tools on surface. And you can see some of them actually go underground. I, I made one of these and then I copied it and scaled it and rotated it just to speed up the process. Other cases, I've I rotated it. It doesn't have to uh, sit exactly on the surface because some of it kind of will go up and down. Uh, if we switch back to the meadow render, you can see this one as it comes up the hill, they become more obvious. Maybe these are, I think this, this fur needs to be a little taller to blend in. But anyway, that's how you can adjust the color of the original base image. And you can see here in the lawn that that's the denser setting for the grass. You can see it's shorter. It's more like regular bluegrass or whatever uh, cultivated lawn. Uh, but it, it has a pretty convincing um, appearance of the meadow. And again, you can adjust density and length and variations to try and get the look that you want. You can thin it out even more and add more of those other um, blending agents as, it, as you go in there. Now, the other thing that I did is actually for these groups, uh, I'll close this for a second, is I can click on, uh, down here I still have the originals. I found a flower, I think I used this one, and I changed some of the petals to more of a light yellow beige color, and then some of them were orange. So once I got the grasses in there, um, I took that same group and applied a scatter group to it. So I'll go into my render list and hit edit. So you can see it, well, this is for this one over here, but you can see that's the, the flowers. Now what I did to make this work, and that's the component that you see down here. Um, what I did to make that work is I took that flower component, which is had the the origin of the component at zero, zero, zero. So it's basically, you know, sitting on, a, on the ground plane. Inside the component, I took those flowers and I moved them up in the air. And I just had to experiment a couple times to get the right height because that 30 or 40 doesn't represent exactly, you know, inches in there. Plus the flower has some height. So I think maybe it's it's in that range. But I, I, I experimented with that till I got it the right height inside the component. So when it scattered the objects, I close this down. If it's when I scatter the objects, it's scattering them up around the top of the of the meadow grasses. If they were just placed in the ground plane, they'd be down below, and you wouldn't be able to see them. You wouldn't see very much of them. Uh, so that's the method I use to try and blend that in. And you can adjust the spacing. And if I probably if I had to do over again or make it better, I would delete some of these flowers so that there's only a couple, and then you could have more of them in there and you wouldn't see the stronger clumps that you see there. You'd see them blended out a little bit more. Um, but they still work pretty good. They're kind of floating in there. You don't have to, can't really see exactly what they connect to, but that works okay. And you could, again, do that with as many variations as you want. With scatter, you can scatter them across an entire area or you can manually point and click and put them in there and really randomize it by your eye. So either method works pretty well. So that's the way I, I uh, added those in there. Uh, this upper uh, deck, I just found a component and placed it in there. And since I thought, well, there were some, uh, we talked in class about maybe screening off this back side in there a little bit. So I just added some trees in there manually with the, uh, with the point and click method uh, using that. And again, in this rendering, right over here, you can see those trees back there behind there, and it gives you a better sense of scale, put some people in there. Uh, these are also lob work shrubs, and you go pines in the foreground there. So again, uh, I don't have the edge finished here. There's lots of things to do, but I think this starts giving you an idea of once you set up those components, adding the rest of these trees, and even the meadow grasses, this is only a few clicks to create each of these uh, these very complex meadows. That uh, And I don't have the grass applied to this woodland area, and maybe I'd want those trees more dense. I can just go in and modify that scatter group, add more plants in. Uh, I could add uh, a ground cover on the ground plane, and uh, it gives me a really nice rendering. And as I do this, as I mentioned before, it starts making me think, okay, you know, is this the look I want? Do I need something else? This area has no plants in it at all, so I probably need to add those in. Maybe it's too dense around the, uh, the uh, tree house there, and I want to open that up a little bit. Uh, but at least as you start studying the forms of the plants, the textures, the colors, you can see how that works.
Okay, let's see if there's anything else. I mean, that's one of the points that I want to make that as you do this, as you place things in here, you can continue to refine and modify your design in ways that you just simply can't if you're looking at it uh, in plan view. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, there's lots more details, bridges, railings, lighting. Uh, so if you want to do some night scenes, and you can see over here, the building isn't quite sitting down on this grade. So when I did this, I didn't, since I was matching the edge, I just left this grade the same. And you can see it's flatter here, it slopes up. Could have maybe leveled this out a little bit more, but actually works pretty well. So in this case, I probably adjust the building heights and have stairs or a ramp to, in order to make that fit on the landform uh, a little bit better. But that's kind of the completion of that process. If you break this systematically into these groups, you study the materials that you want to use, and then you go in there and work with uh, any modifications to landform that you need to add. Again, we did all the main grading before we draped these surfaces uh, onto the landform so that we can apply different materials to them. But it keeps the model pretty light. You can see this thing navigates around really fast, even with the entire rest of the neighborhood here. And, uh, but the renderings give you a lot higher level of detail. Uh, and start giving you a real feel for the materiality and lighting and so forth. Um, so hopefully that helps. That shows you where this process can go and what kind of results you can get at the end of it. And uh, if you have any other questions, just let me know.